Joining us for today's webinar, let's go ahead and get started. Turn off our music here. Today we're talking about connected learning spaces. We're talking about outfitting your learning spaces for success with D10 and Zoom rooms primarily today. Um, my name is Jackson Root. I'm one of the marketing managers here at D10 um, on the content side. I'm joined today by Scott Krickerberg, our head of strategic alliances at D10. And we have a very special guest with us this morning, Mr. Marlon uh, Aguilar from the University of Chicago. He's the AV technology manager there. Um, and in just a bit, we're gonna jump into some of the use cases that they've deployed at the University of Chicago. Uh, we're gonna walk through some of the success that they, they've found in their connected learning spaces. Uh, so it's gonna be a really great discussion this morning. So before I jump into today's agenda, just some, some um, you know, standard things we do in webinar is we do have the chat function uh, disabled. This is just sort of a best practice. If you do have any questions at all, and I really hope you do, uh, please use the Q&A function. So many of them will pull questions as we go. Some will save time for at the end. Um, and if for whatever reason, we're not able to answer them during the webinar this morning, we'll follow up with you uh, after the webinar concludes. So um, please use the Q&A function. You know, I'll be prompting us while we go through the webinar to kind of jump into there. Um, and let's jump right in. So today's agenda, we're going to talk about some of the things that we're seeing in today's hybrid learning environments and connected learning spaces. Um, we're going to talk about what's happening at the University of Chicago. Um, super cool. We're going to talk about uh, ways you can outfit spaces for success with intuitive collaboration technology. Um, with D10 and with Zoom Rooms, you have many, many tools at your disposal to deploy intuitive, easy to use solutions for educators, for faculty, for students. So we're going to walk through a lot of those. Um, we'll have time for Q&A. And I will say this too, we'll be talking about some of our new stuff we have at D10. Um, if you haven't been following us too closely, you'll probably see some new things that are that are super cool, super interesting um, ways to, to definitely cover um, larger spaces or, or irregularly shaped rooms. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. So let's talk a little bit about the state of today. Um, right, obviously we all remember during the pandemic, we had to shift very quickly to find ways to connect with each other while we were at home, while we were you know, on hybrid work schedules, while some of us were in the classroom, many of us haven't returned at all. And some of these factoids, um, right, haven't changed a whole lot. So, right, we're still seeing hybrid learning as what we at the time were thinking of, this is the way of the future. It is now, um, hybrid learning isn't going anywhere, as we all know. Although many of us are still in the classroom, um, we're gonna be looking at a number of use cases in a minute at the Royal College of London, um, at Oxford, certainly at the University of Chicago as well, where students that are unable to come to the classroom or maybe might live far away now have so many more ways to engage in the classroom. Um, so, right, that's that's the way of the future. That's where we're at today, as many of you know. Um, it's really cool facts here at, at the bottom that you see, right? So we're seeing that by deploying connected learning spaces, we're reducing rates of dropout, um, it's, it's very easy for faculty to engage on a one-to-one -one or more eye-to-eye -eye basis with students. Um, and it just, it, it makes everything more flexible and more intuitive for everybody in hybrid learning. So one of the things that we're seeing, um, we call it the IT challenge. Certainly folks like Marlon, we're gonna talk about this in a minute, are charged with um, right this pretty steep, charge here, which is to facilitate collaboration and communication, to support teachers and deliver more impactful instruction, to ensure positive learning outcomes and student development, um, and, and ultimately to teach from and learn from anywhere. Um, and that's really where technology comes into play, right? D10, we pride ourselves on making very intuitive, very easy to use solutions. Um, and that's a big piece of this puzzle. So this is an excellent segue to introduce our guest. So um, Marlon, before we jump into University of Chicago, some of your use cases there, does this, how do you feel about this slide in particular? Like, does this ring true with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, traditionally, uh, uh, our whole AV team was, was never really tasked with supporting video conferencing, right? A lot of our spaces were not AV equipped. Um, and where we did have VC, it was more conference rooms. Um, and then we went from, 
being regular AV uh, support techs to we need to uh, help them with uh, Zoom Room, how to connect uh, meetings, and then how to engage the far end students who were, you know, always in the room. So it became a lot of uh, new challenges that we had never crossed when we were helping people get get uh, transition to hybrid or uh, remote teaching. Very cool. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely a, a challenge that seems like you've you've actually done quite well at this point, right? We going into to preparing for this webinar, we had quite a few conversations about the ways that you've been able to support. where well, you have over two hundred classrooms on campus, um, and out of those thirty three dev devices you have deployed across campus, um, particularly with D ten. Do you want to walk us through just some of the the classrooms that you have um, on campus? Yeah, so, you know, like most uh, university spaces, we have a mix of, you know, huddle rooms, seminar rooms, lecture rooms, and then big auditorium spaces. But one of the challenges that we faced was we have a lot of spaces that are traditional chalkboard heavy used uh, classroom spaces, 20, 30 uh, seater spaces where folks like math were always used to having zero tech in their teaching workflow, students in the classroom. And then all of a sudden pandemic hits, we sent these math faculty home with an iPad or some device that they had never used to teach and said, just go ahead and teach your math class how you did before. And that didn't work for a lot of people. They wanted to be able to write and, you know, look at, you know, faces when they're working through a problem set. Um, so that that was one of the reasons that we quickly um, shifted to something like the 55 inch uh D10s was we could, you know, easily give them a device that was always that was already running Zoom. They could annotate and see the far end without having to fumble with their laptop or an iPad. Connect the, the device, make sure their audio was connected. And the 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 real plus of that was the math folks were really used to also holding office hours, so they could hold their office hours with students who needed help with problem sets. They could work on their problems and then send all the copies of any annotation that was done to the folks who were, you know, joining them for remote office hours. Um, so a quick deployment for us was D10s on uh, carts, D10s installed where the, we thought that they were going to be permanently needed. But we were able to take a bunch of flex rooms that had no AV and all of a sudden, you know, make them easy to uh, wrap in with uh, Zoom and VC. Right. Yeah, you know, we see a lot of use cases in EDU with with the carts. I mean, so much flexibility there. Um, no, we're certainly we're going to flip through some more photos we've got um, from from some of your classrooms with B seven X or the D ten on on the cart. Um, unless you also have a D ten mate in this photo that we're seeing on the right. Yeah. Um. So that was a more recent install uh, conference space in our Warrenville office. Um. They wanted to. Um, still have something that they could touch when they're sitting at the table. And if they're just going to do meetings and not annotate, they wanted an easy way to just get the meeting launched um, and still and not have to get up and touch the screen. But um, in, a, in a lot of spaces, when they're the 55 inch, we 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 really don't need the the mate unless they want that more kind of conference room with the touch panel on the table feel. Right. Um, the other the other uh, thing that that we've liked is that um, an example here at that top right, uh, an executive office said, I want a lounge set up for my video conferencing system. So we were able to just mount the uh, D7 lower than you would you know normally do with a external VC camera and you know having to do a ceiling mic and all like all the stuff. So nice lounge seating. We were able to mount this thing lower at eye level, and he's really able to replicate that. You're in my office. We're having a one-on-one -on -one meeting, uh, and he can be, you know, one-on-one -on -one with whoever remote. Well, wow. so students were able to just call in over Zoom and just interact directly with a professor in their office hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's a really interesting use case. That's something I've never heard of before we started talking about it, but it, it seems like such a natural uh, deployment, right? Just yeah. mounting much lower, and then lounge chairs. It just it it, <clears throat> it levels the entire conversation. Yeah, it makes it much more casual. You can just have a 
you know, just like you're having a Zoom call with any of your other colleagues. Exactly. And then the, the other thing that became uh, popular in a lot of our admin offices uh, was the uh, D10 uh, Me, the 27 inch versions. Um, a lot of a lot of users, especially admin folks who didn't traditionally have a laptop in their in their um, in their setup every day, they could they could sit there and say, oh, I have a my own personal D10 machine that I can take Zoom calls with. Um, and it, and it I, that also triggered this, uh, which we're going to talk about is the we had a we had an interesting request from the Booth School that said um, we're working hybrid or flex schedules. We're going to have a reception desk that is going to be staffed part time with people who are virtual. And then um, we want to be able to have the users walk into the lobby and still call a receptionist from whatever department they want to talk to. Um, and so this became a real easy way for us to give them that virtual reception desk feature. Yeah, it's so cool. When that first came out, we were so excited about it. Um, we've seen some really, really interesting deployments for that that virtual receptionist, that kiosk mode. Um, right, you can see on the screen right there, it's a user could walk into that, that lobby, walk up to the screen, and then immediately call any pool of contacts with any one of those three buttons. Yeah, um, and so that is something that um, as, as people started, you know, returning to work or, you know, different uh, schedules, it was easy to just accommodate even like, oh, I'm going to be remote that day, but I'm going to still be able to help, you know, staff that desk. Right. Uh, and then, and then we, you know, we, we've seen a, a lot of flavors of, of cart options and um, we had, we had some spaces where they wanted uh, what I would call like a nicer furniture finish looking cart. Um, and this that that heckler stand uh, became quite popular on this campus as well. A lot of people didn't want the traditional, you know, metal black or metal white, you know, T stand. Uh, so there was there's there's been a lot of nice options from uh, heckler on how to you know dress up these these cards to make them look a little bit more soft. That's great. Yeah, we um, right the heckler card is something that we we do carry for the 55 inch displays. That makes it really easy for for EDU certainly to make a, a portable rolling more mobile solution. Um, great. So that's, I think we have another round of photos here. So this is pretty cool. Um, tell us a little bit about this classroom. It looks like it's it's in need of of kind of what's the next evolutionary step for making it a connected classroom. Absolutely. So this was a consultation I had from Creative Writing. They have this space where they traditionally just do creative writing discussion uh, uh, sessions. And then they also do their faculty meetings here. And, uh, you know, they they uh, came to uh, my team and said, we're gonna get new furniture in here, but we always uh, use the whiteboard for our discussions. And every once in a while we have to bring people in over Zoom and we don't, we don't wanna lose the whiteboard functionality. Um, so natural uh, uh, transition was, oh, you know, let me, let me let you borrow one of our 55 inch D10s on a cart, see if that works for you. They they had it for a week. They said, great, we're going to give them a, a 75 inch version here. And it's going to take, you know, a traditionally uh, AV ignored space, as I like to call, um, and, you know, give them content sharing, annotation, and then video conferencing all in that one installation. And from an operational standpoint, the infrastructure to, to you know, add power and data to a room like this is a lot lower than me having to tell them, okay, you want a camera location here, you need a ceiling mic here, now I need low voltage pathways from here to here to an AV rack. Um, all those, all the cost of kind of lifting up a room ready for an AV install is really low when you're, you know, dealing with these all-in-one systems. Right. Yeah, you just stick it on the wall and right. you're good to go. Yep. Yeah, great. Great. Yeah, we, I'm excited to see how this turns out. Um, you know, I imagine a lot of this this room too it does seem a little bit antiquated. So once yeah. you throw that that D7 in the room, it sort of starts set the whole wheel in motion as to you know simplifying the entire space. Yeah. So yeah, they're they'll they'll have uh, new furniture that that uh, new 75 inch and uh, coat of paint. This room is going to look completely different. Yeah. <laughs> 
Awesome. I know there's there's a We're number of institutions that will deploy D7s in a room. I think they have them down to like a 15 minute deployment. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll have to have you back uh, in, in a couple months so we can see the before and after. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, I, I think there's you know thousands of rooms right sitting around that look just like this, right? With dry yeah. erase and like you said, the options of a camera on a stick. Uh, an additional camera for the people, you know, you still need a, a digital display. So by the time you would, you know, piecemeal all of that out, it's a lot of work for you, a lot of extra costs. So yeah, uh, it's exciting to hear, you know, uh, we, you know, we think a, a D7 on the wall is the best option. So to have you validate that, right, it's exciting. And, and I think anyone joining us today, you know, can agree that they probably have spaces that look just like this. And, and, um av ignored i think is a is a great title for them right well and and i'm sure um like many other campuses we have a mix of department spaces that are what we call proprietary and then registrar or central college funded classrooms so not everyone has a budget to take on a full room renovation so i have a lot of department spaces that, that look like this that when they came back to in-person uh uh teaching and uh meetings they said well, now everyone expects you to be able to host a hybrid call. And mm -hmm. so, so many of these, you know, uh, clients that, that are looking for a, you know, 10K and under budget to refresh their room to be ready for AV. And so a lot of spaces like this really only need, uh, you know, simple all-in-one product. Yeah. And I think it's great too. Part of the story is you running your own internal POC, right? You're running proof of concepts where you're rolling stuff in on a cart saying, take this thing for a spin, right? And they're coming back going, okay, this solves all of our problems, right? How, how right. big do you get it? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I, I know when we were talking to you, you mentioned that there's a bit of a challenge in getting um, faculty that were very used to chalkboards and dry erase boards. Like how was, how was getting them used to the Zoom whiteboard? Was that a challenge or did it seem pretty intuitive? Um, it, it was actually, you know, pretty easy. Um, we, when we, when we brought in our first pair of rolling uh, 55 inch D, uh, D10s, we, we, we brought them into our campus North building, which um, the top floors of that, of that building is uh, student dorm rooms and the bottom floors are classrooms and some shared multi shared multi-purpose rooms. So I brought those two products in and I just kind of did a, you know, ge a general invite to, the registrar's office and said, hey, we're going to pilot these two products for um, anyone who like math, econ, uh, folks who were just chalkboard or whiteboard teaching spaces, come, you know, come here and try these. And um, I had I had very little pushback from from folks who were going from no AV teaching to that because the learning curve was just so low. Yeah, I think once they realized, too, that they could take that whiteboard and immediately make it a digital image to share with anybody. Yeah. Right? And you forget like pulling out your phone and snapping a photo of the chalkboard. That's yeah. We're not that, doing that anymore. And yeah. even like, you know, they would, they would have like their invites already, you know, pre pre sent out to students or the people who are joining them on office hours. They don't have to remember all the email contacts of who was on that call. They can just send to all. Like that part was, uh, you know, something that we didn't even think about was was like going to be so so handy. Awesome. Well, that's great. Well, um, I think what we're going to do now is just talk about some more of these use cases and ways of, of deploying some of this technology that we've been talking about. Um, and Marlon, please, you know, I'd really love your input right? as we go through some of these use cases. Please feel free to make any contributions um, if you've tried any of them. If you have experience with them, excuse me, my, my cat's behind me there. Um, anyway, so I think some of the core principles that, that go into designing the ideal hybrid classroom is that it has to be simple, right? I think that that was certainly one of your core requirements going into your deployments was that it has to be super easy, hassle-free setup. Like it just goes up, you just walk up to it, you push start and it jumps into a meeting. Mm. It has to be flexible, right? So many of your deployments are on carts. You have to be able to move it from room to room. Um, has to be easy to, to um, switch licenses right, by IT admin. Um, I know we haven't talked a whole lot about Orbit yet, but, but Marlon, I know that Orbit is something certainly is, 
been a nice tool for you to use um, on your side. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And lastly, of course, it has to be powerful. Um, it has to be able to provide that next level experience so that folks that do engage with it and, and launch into their meetings, they feel like, wow, okay, this is the way of the future. Um, the camera quality is crisp. The audio quality is, um, you know, intelligible conversations. Um, and of course, the, the touchscreen whiteboarding has to be fast, has to be seamless. It has to feel very natural. So I think that these three principles are really what go into um, picking out any technology for your space. Yeah, one thing that I, that I want to mention real quick, the, the flexibility of the wireless versus wire connectivity, especially in a lot of these AV ignored spaces, even if they did have an existing network jack, because they were never connected with AV, our networking team didn't have that jack either on or active or configured to the right VLAN. So a lot of the times, if we'd get a call for uh, someone's going to be hybrid this week because a student's sick, we need to get a, a cart in there that day or the next day. Having them pre-configured to connect on our uh, UChicago IoT network, we were able to just put it in there and not worry about uh, a wired data since it wasn't going to be a permanent request, right? It might be in there for the week and then roll out. So that mm -hmm. that part of it, it, it has, was also re really handy in these ad hoc requests. Wow. Yeah, because in that in that one photo that you shared before, right, it was a dry erase board, but I did see a router, right? So what you right. see a lot of times is you do have Wi-Fi in these spaces, Correct. right? There, there's network. Uh, but then, you know, making that easy ad, you know, on a card or connecting to Wi-Fi, that's something that, right, you can do with a D10 device. Um, so I thought that was interesting, right? A lot of that foundation seems to be laid where it is easy to drop in, right, AV mm -hmm. into a space and, and connect to an existing network. So Yeah, yeah. Right? even the old spaces will have an access point, but they might not always have wired data available throughout mm -hmm. throughout the room. And what's great is, you know, especially with Zoom Rooms and, and Zoom Client, how they kind of integrate from the network side, right? So as long as everyone in that room is connected to the same network, then all of a sudden, right, it's a much more encompassing situation where people are sharing, annotating over shared content, right? You can even control uh, the D10 from your client or your mobile app. So, you know, just making that ecosystem um, you know, super easy to use, I think is a huge advantage as well. Pretty cool. Yeah. And actually there's a really great Q and a question that just came through that. I feel like right now would be a perfect time to address it. Um, Scott Hines is asking about the, the suitable height, right? When you're mounting 55 or 75 inch display, this is something we talk about all the time. Um, and you know, it's something certainly we saw in, let's see if I can get to it really quick here. Um, this use case on the top right corner, right, where you just where you decided to mount it much lower, right? Typically, I think the rule of thumb is if it's in, if it's a room where um, folks are going to be standing and interacting with the board, you want the center of the board at eye level height, um, which I think is we, we often say like sixty five inches. Um, I have to get the official spec on that one. But if it's a room where everybody's seated, it's a, it's a lower height. Um, and Scott, I'm not sure off the top of your head if you know those heights, but we can certainly follow up with the official dimensions. Mm -hmm. But this is something where when you deploy that space, certainly you want to think about the way that folks are using it in that room. Um, Marlon, do you, do you recall what height you may have mounted that, that lower one there on the top right? So for the majority of the spaces, if people are going to be um, seated or they're installed, we, you know, we start at 48 inches from the bottom of the monitor to the floor. Um, but that is just a starting point because every room is going to have a little bit different uh, setup or use case. You know, I might get someone who says, yeah, I don't care that the annotation is going to be much lower than what we usually, because I want that lounge seated, you know, point of view. Um, yeah. So for us, it, it you know, we try and follow a standard, but then we definitely have to adjust based on what the client is, is, is asking. Yeah, and part of the question too that that Scott um, was asking our, our, our attendee in the webinar is that he mentioned that vendors are used to installing touchscreens higher on the wall for maximum visibility. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's a really poignant thing to say because we're not necessarily mounting these displays for maximum visibility, although certainly that's a big aspect of 
of deploying these units, but really it's about collaboration and interactivity. So one thing that we talk about a lot of D10 is that we, we often recommend never to put a cabinet or a desk or something right in front of the display, right? You wanna leave that space open, just like you have here in the top right corner photo um, in, in the press room 208, right? You see that the, the wall is definitely free in front of the unit. Um, and that allows folks to walk right up to it, interact directly with the display, the whiteboard, to you know, interact with contacts, um, change camera settings, anytime that they're gonna to need to actually control the room, they can do right there at the board. Um, we had another 75 inch that we did for um, our Searle Chem Lab, and they were, uh, they didn't want to decide on the height, and we gave them an electric motorized uh, stand. So yeah. the faculty who want, who are shorter or taller can just adjust it based on what mm -hmm. height is comfortable for their annotation. Yeah. And what, you know, I don't want to give too much away but you know we see that a lot with um like a motorized credenza something from salamander right there's plenty of companies that um will offer something that will lift the board up and down uh one thing we're working with zoom rooms on is building that into their control so if you do press to share content if you do press uh to to start a whiteboard we can actually control credenza in the future and allow that board to move up and down so that way you're creating a you know the ultimate uh space and then you can kind of slightly shift use cases right in real time and, and be able to manage that so that is uh super common right that that we see when people are deploying this asking this type of question so you know, for now, there's options to have the best of both worlds. Um, but truly, you know, it, you just need to define that space. Is this going to be a, a, a meeting heavy room or is this going to be an interactive type of room? And, and I think that you can work with your AV integrators to find the right positioning. Yeah. And, and that is who we, who we used for that for that use case. Was oh, the salamander? salamander? Salamander. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. Um, you know, if there's customers on here interested in that, they're one of our ecosystem partners, so we can talk about that solution and, and help you plan for the best deployment. Cool. Yeah, and before we jump back into kind of the content of the, of the presentation deck here, um, it is worth noting that the, all of our solutions do come with standard visa mount points, so it is really easy to fit to any existing, you know, mounting solution you might find in the marketplace. So um, let's talk a little about D10 um, and Zoom, right? Because without Zoom rooms, um, right? D10 and Zoom rooms, they work very well together, um, right? That's really what ties the whole thing together. And obviously at University of Chicago, you guys are a, a Zoom rooms institution, which is great. Um, I'm sure the students love that. Very intuitive, very easy to use. Uh, you, everybody knows how to use it at this point. Um, D10 uh, was born into Zoom rooms, right? We were, we were designed as, as, initially to be the hardware solution for Zoom rooms. And so everything that we do, everything that we develop into our, our products is, is designed hand in hand with engineers at Zoom. Um, and I, certainly I think you feel that when you, when you engage with the boards in your space. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about some of these solutions that we saw um, in your deployments at University of Chicago. Um, here's the D7X. This is our flagship product now. Um, you're right. The D7 is really the one that, that put D10 on the map, but the D7X um, is, is now the new solution that includes um, support for Zoom Rooms uh, and Microsoft Teams, although we're not talking a whole lot about Teams today. Um, right, it has a 4K display, it has a 4K camera system. Um, right, there is a question in the, in the Q&A function, um, again, thank you guys for your questions about mounting a camera below. So while you, you're you not able to take the AV bar from the top of the unit and mount it below, um, this does support additional cameras. So you, you can see in this use case photo behind the D7X here, there's a document camera on the desk. Looks like it's pointing at like a, a leaf in a Petri dish or something. That's a very common use case we see a lot. Um, it's very easy to plug in. Um, additional capture sources into a D7X. So um, certainly that's available to you. Powerful 16 microphone array. Um, this will cover a, a very large space. So we find often folks that will deploy these in larger classrooms and larger auditoriums and meeting rooms that it, they're deploying it much larger than our spec distance. 
um, and they're still having crystal clear conversations. That's great. Um, and of course, right, as we mentioned a minute ago, you plug it in, it just works. So Marlon, you mentioned that, you know, you being able to, to connect over wireless or ethernet um, without a whole lot of infrastructure in the walls is kind of a requirement. Um, certainly you're not alone in that. I, you know, we hear that a lot. And so that's being able to, to just connect easily and, and intuitively is, is um, kind of part of the core design of this product. So here's some more um, photos of the D7X deployed on carts. So similar to what we were seeing at the University of Chicago, this is um, deployments as you can see them looks like in art classrooms, um, in shared labs, in larger meeting rooms with that kind of big U-shaped table or kind of more of a square shaped desk to facilitate those face-to-face -face conversations, but also allow you to interact with folks that might not be in the class. Right, students at home, maybe guest faculty lecturers that can tune in just for that specific topic. Um, these are all really amazing use cases that simply we didn't have five, six years ago. Right, these are things that have come out of the pandemic that we're now embracing, and it's it's really redefining the way that we talk about hybrid learning and connected classrooms. So specifically, the D7X on the cart. Um, it's really, it's just such an amazing solution, right? You have that maximum flexibility to put it wherever you need to put it. Um, you can put two of them in a room. You can have them covering two sides of a room. Um, you can roll it from classroom to classroom if you need to, right? If you have a mixed use space, let's say you have a, a larger auditorium that you use for more than just connected classrooms or, or um, Zoom meetings, right? You can move it out of the room. You can move it into the room, um, right? Our, you know, I will say the D7X is the thinnest and the lightest weight solution on the market today. And of course, you're not lifting it, you're rolling it, but it allows um, virtually anybody on faculty, uh, students to easily move this thing from room to room. And they're also solidly built, so you don't have to worry about them like, you know, getting dinged or, or falling off the card or breaking you know, during transit. And lastly, one thing I wanna talk about um, that, Marla, I know you mentioned uh, digital signage is something that you guys use on campus. Yeah. Have you so, experimented with that on the D7 or the? Yeah. The so um, in a couple of slides that you showed, showed uh, earlier, we we have uh, when the when the rooms are not being used, we have a couple of U Chicago logos that just loop. Um, but uh, we have we have shown uh, users and uh, faculty who, who have these in their spaces that they can add some of that custom content directly through the admins uh, Zoom portal. So if they want uh, to tie anything that they want people to see when the rooms are in their kind of inactive state, uh, that's also been pretty handy. Nice. Yeah, it's got to be really convenient just to manage that directly from the from the ZDM yep. client. Um, here's a few more photos of deployments. Um, one is the Royal College of Art in London on the left there. So it looks like students are engaging in maybe a, a screen printing demo. And then on the right is a robotics lab at uh, Oxford. So pretty cool use cases. I mean, it's, you don't really think about all the places where you can deploy the solution and be able to connect with anybody. You know, it's, it's really so easy now. So here you're seeing it, it looks like an art critique. And on the bottom right, um, right, a very traditional definition of a connected classroom where the professor is engaging with students in the class, but also students at home. Mm -hmm. So this is a really interesting use case. Um, and Marlon, I don't know if you guys have done any rooms like this currently, but certainly at USC on the top right, you can see that picture there. They've got um, one of their larger lecture halls. They have a, a 75 inch display in the bottom right corner that they can use to call out and engage. And they can also take the, um, the video from that screen, they can put it on the larger screen as well. So it allows the professor to interact with the screen kind of in the, you know, immediately next to him, but also you'll see that that image on the, the larger screen in auditorium as well. We and did. If you tuned into Zoomtopia last year, we saw that as well, where Richard Branson was was also being um, included on screen here. And I think his his video feed was also being shown on the larger screen behind him. I was gonna say, we did a space like this um, where even though the professor was running 
Zoom off their laptop connected to uh, the projector and the screen in a large auditorium space. They had a, um, a D10 on the stage connected to that same meeting, not connected with audio, but just showing the gallery view because they didn't want the remote participants to, to kind of get hidden away in the in the small uh, images on the actual screen. So they we've used it for that second gallery view screen to augment an existing like projector setup. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, an excellent use case. And you know, I, it's funny because we're in a webinar right now and obviously folks that are, that are tuning in, um, again, thank you guys for, for joining us this morning. I can't see you, right? But I'm talking to you. Um, being able to actually see the folks that you're engaging with, it really makes it that one-to-one -one conversation. Um, Marlon, certainly, you know, you and I are having this conversation, Scott, um, and you guys that are tuning in are joining us as well. But being able to see students on that large screen next to this, next to the the big screen, um, it, it makes it really a more of a classroom setting. Um, that, yeah, that's amazing. Um, you know, one thing too that we talked about was being able to share content, right? Being able to directly share content onto the the D7, right? You certainly you have a USB cable you can plug into your your laptop, but with Zoom rooms you also have proximity sharing, right? Or you can share from a browser as well, right? If you don't have the Zoom client installed on your laptop. So, you know, how what what kind of experience have you had so far with sharing content at the University of Chicago? Yeah, so it took us a while to get um, folks to wrap their head around the the fact that when you're dealing with a Zoom room enabled device like the D10, that they don't need to rely on the wired connection anymore to share content. And that really helped us when, you know, like like I'm sure every university tech team felt betrayed when Apple released that first line of M1 Max, and then all of a sudden everyone needed a new adapter. And... Um, having the zoom room proximity content sharing be wireless that kind of removed us from telling people okay you can battle with the adapter shuffle make sure you grab the right one make sure you have the, the cable or just open up your zoom app and hit share and you don't even have to know the meeting id or the passcode you know you're in the space with the product and it knows that you're there and you can share the content um even now we we are we're, we're still installing systems that will give them the a backup wired connection but more and more i'm getting folks to adopt that they don't need the cable or the adapter anymore for the laptop because you're already connecting to the to the meeting over uh wireless so you can just share content that way as well great yeah before we talk about view pro i one thing i do want to mention about the wired connection on the b7x series um is that it does allow for usb touchback super cool something you can't get um, through Zoom, Zoom Rooms proximity sharing. Uh, the, with USB touchback, you plug in that USB-C cable into your laptop. And you can actually control your laptop from the board, which is pretty amazing. Um, so, so I will say there is a benefit there, but, but yeah, it's so incredibly easy for folks, you know, guests that are coming in, students that might have a presentation on their laptop to get that right up onto the big screen. So View Pro um, is something that we just showed at Infocom uh, a few weeks back. And uh, you know, the reason I include this in the in the presentation today is because it really allows for so many more use cases, so many more deployments with the D7X series. Um, the new D7Xs have a socket on the back, and you literally just slide these cameras on to the sides of the of the D7. Um, and it adds a tremendous amount of camera versatility to that, that system. So it allows you to cover um, a space, you know, we're saying 30 foot by 30 foot. Um, the reality is the cameras are, are super powerful. You know, it, any long skinny space, short wide space, you know, it's not gonna have any problem with, with any of those spaces, getting you that 4K crystal clear fidelity um, in your Zoom rooms meetings. So definitely keep an eye out for more information on the View Pro system. Um, if you do have a D7X, uh, right, it'll just integrate directly with that system. Um, and it's just, it's really powerful. It, the, the reaction that we've had so far from educators, from folks in um, commercial 
installations has just been tremendous on this product. So one thing we didn't talk about a whole lot yet is the D10 onboard, right? And this is your standalone or companion whiteboard for Zoom rooms. So it's a 4K display. Um, this is if you just need more real estate for whiteboarding for presentation. You want to make sure that your your primary D7X, um, you have that gallery view, Marlon. You mentioned that it's so mm -hmm. important to have your your students right, actually attending, being present in those meetings. The, the onboard gives you that extra real estate to engage with content, to flip through presentations um, and all the, the, the shared whiteboarding. Of course, it's lightweight, it's slim. Um, you'll notice the form factor is almost identical to the D7X. Same with the visa mount, works really great on a cart. Um, we find these a lot in, in uh, EDU. Uh, I think lastly, we're gonna talk about the Mi Pro a little bit. So we saw the Mi Pro, that's our 27 inch um, all-in-one. You saw that being used as a kiosk display. Marlon, you mentioned that um, your faculty have them in their offices or at home as well. Yeah, um, a lot of our admin uh, folks um, ended up grabbing this as their in-office solution so that they could not worry about their laptop being the only way that they can connect these meetings. And a lot of people like that they could have their Zoom account logged in they invite, you know, their um, they they have their meetings tied to Outlook, and they have their meeting list right on the screen. They can walk in and just hit one touch join, and that was um, a big time saver for them. So it that that product became pretty uh, popular with all that with all the folks there. Awesome, yeah, and it um, it's it's great as just a secondary display as well. In fact, I have one on my desk right now that I'm I'm currently using, even just as my secondary display, having that twenty seven inch. Is a, it's a lot of real estate on the desk, which is amazing for just productivity in general. Um, and again, too, with, with the, the Mi Pro, you have that Smart Connect, which is that, that USB cable you can plug into your laptop. And over that USB, um, you can share, you, you use it as your second monitor. You can interact with the screen. You can whiteboard on it um, through your laptop that's connected. Uh, so super powerful use case there. This is a desktop companion. Um, and let's talk a little about D10 Orbit. So um, D10 Orbit is our remote device management service. It's a lot more than that as well. It allows you to manage your user licenses. It allows you to manage your firmware um, uh, updates on all of your devices. Your entire fleet of D10 solutions can be managed from a single cloud-based dashboard. So mm -hmm. you can have one admin um, in charge of all of your D10 solutions across campus. So it allows for remote device monitoring. You, you'll see immediately if there's an issue with one of the devices. Um, with some of our, our tiers as well, you can uh, remotely repair a lot of issues too that, that may come up, right? Some of them are so minor, it just requires uh, a reset. You get extended product warranty um, and advanced parts replacement is huge. So, um, you know, Marlon, we talked about this a little bit going into this webinar, your experience with Orbit. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how that's kind of worked out for you? Yeah, uh, so Orbit was not on our radar when we had two devices, uh, but then when we went to five, six, and it became our job to, you know, uh, remember, how that fleet is connected is it a wired uh d10 is it a is, a, is it a wi-fi d10 um and also mac address information uh it became clear that we we you know we didn't want to manage this as a excel document that we had to like manually track all this stuff so we could we quickly asked our av integrators that when they're deploying a d10 product on campus that onboarding into our orbit account is part of the checkout process so that um, the folks who facilitate the Zoom room license and the and the and the um, conference spaces, the voice team, and the techs who support the products in the rooms, all are looking at the same list of devices, um, so we can get notifications if uh, devices offline, if there's an issue with a mic portion. Uh, but really, nine times out of ten, it's it's a quick way for us to reboot a system uh, remotely and grab any of that you know uh data that we need if we have any any rma needs so the, the id number mac address that kind of stuff serial number right yeah so I, 
just being able to immediately see all the relevant information from a single dashboard or having to flip, you know, a lot of information that's only in ZDM, um, you can get it directly out of Orbit as well. It can be super convenient. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think the big the big thing to talk about here is, is that it gives you that peace of mind, right? It reduces device downtime strictly with advanced parts replacement. So we'll send you, if for whatever reason, you know, a D10 requires replacement part, we'll get that in the mail for you before you get yours back to us. Um, just to make sure that you get as little downtime as possible, that your rooms have maximum uptime. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about folks going into that meeting room or like, you know, let's say your your uh, your executive team having rooms down when they need to have a meeting, and right? make sure that those rooms are always up to speed. Um, and I'll say lastly about D10 Orbit. Um, you know, if you're interested in this service, if you have a number of D10 solutions or you're thinking about deploying a large number of rooms, um, talk directly to us. We have some some other plans that right where you can actually leverage D10 support team as an extension of your IT support. So, so get in touch with us. Um, that's something that we can talk to you about. So just to recap, uh, D7X, um, the D10, D7, the D10 on, really all fall into that D7X family. Uh, Marlon, I think this is the lion's share of your deployments use that solution. Mm -hmm. So, right, you have the flexibility to choose either a Windows solution or an Android. And I understand that you have mostly the Android solutions on campus. Um, and that's really a personal choice in many ways when it comes down to the AV manager, right? You get that for Zoom rooms or Microsoft Teams. You can, it's great for huddle rooms, small to large meeting rooms. Um, you know, you can use it for digital signage. Then there's the D7X Dual 75, which is something we didn't really talk about a whole lot in this, in this presentation, um, but that's a single system that goes on the wall. It has two displays, has an AV bar in the middle. Um, that's a powerful solution for your larger meeting spaces. Onboard, throw that thing on a cart, roll it between your rooms. It just gives you that much more presentation space for all your Zoom rooms meetings. Um, there's the, the D10 Me, it goes on the desk, the 27 inch. Um, and then there's the D10 Mate, which allows you to control the room directly from the tabletop, which is super convenient. Um, or you can use it as a Zoom room scheduler, um, put that outside the room as well. So you can use that to book the room um, in the future. You can use it to reserve spaces. Uh, it's just a very versatile, very cool little, little device, a 10 inch tablet. We have both PoE and Wi Fi version. So the Wi Fi version, you can lift it out of the cradle, it will recharge in the cradle. You can walk around the room. You can use that to control the, the meeting um, from, your, from your hand. You know, if you're kind of one of those presenters that's much more dynamic, you want to move around the room and talk to students and faculty that might be in the room with you. And with that, um, we want to give you the opportunity to try any of the solutions that you may have seen today. So there's a QR code there on the left. Um, if you're interested, go ahead and give that a scan. That'll pop you into one of our, our forums. You can give us a little information about yourself. We'll follow up um, and we'll get you in touch with one of our solutions experts to make sure you get set up. So we can help you with your device management consultation. We can talk about using orbit options. Uh, we can get you a personalized solutions design. Um, we can get you an in-depth look at all the latest stuff. So we talked about a lot of it today, but there's, you know, we're just scratching the surface. So the D7X Dual 75 is an amazing solution we need to talk about today. Um, so definitely, if you're interested, reach out. Um, yeah, and with that, Marlon, I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. This has been amazing, um, incredible conversation that we've had today. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly, it's been a pleasure just kind of getting to know you and, and your setup at University of Chicago. And of course, Scott, thank you so much for joining us as well, yeah, yeah. as always. Yeah, um, and all of you, been, um, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. Absolutely. I think this has been great because Jackson and I, we run these webinars monthly. We're always talking about um, just how versatile the devices are in a site-wide deployment. And to see you actually embrace that, Marlon, and have educational tools, right? You have facility tools, you're using these for admin, for checking in, for, for meeting, for collaborating. So all, all the stuff that, uh, you know, Jackson and I come in here and, and talk about 
the possibilities, you've really embraced that and deployed it. And, you know, it's great to see all of this working in real life. So thank you so much for your time and, and popping in here and, and uh, going through um, the fantastic setup you guys have up there. No problem. Thanks for letting me share. Absolutely. All right. So and please reach that, out. You guys can take these for a test drive, right? One thing we want to mention is, is we have a highly successful uh, program called Engage, where we work with Zoom to deploy a device on site for you guys. So uh, we can get you in that real world environment. Because like Marlon said, once you push this thing into a room and people are drawing on it, they're interacting, uh, they rarely want to give it back. Right. So uh, we definitely want to sure. extend that offer and, and, and uh, let you guys take a test drive in your own environment uh, and have a, an equally successful deployment uh, as uh, Chicago here. All right. Great. Thanks, everybody. Have Thank a great day. All.